What's up, everybody? It's your boy Melfi for another classic review. Today, I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the one that started it all. The short film that started these two iconic characters. It's Walls of Grumman in A Grand Day Out. Released back in the 4th of November of 1989. And this is the one that really started it all. Started as a a film project of a young man named Nick Park and with the help of Ardman Studios, which Ardman Animation made two certain characters became the faces of Ardman, Walls and Grummet. And before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, do you have plans to go out on a jolly grand day? Go to the moon to find some cheese, huh? Well, you better do it without a robot because this robot's going to kill you if you keep breaking the cheese on the moon. So, yeah, Walls of Grumman, a grand day out. Layer marked. Well, it's actually a grand day. It was originally called A Grand Day Out with Walls of Grumman. Then it was changed to A Grand Day Out. It was released in 1989. It was actually a stop motion animated short film starring Walls of Grumman. It was directed and co written by Nick Park at the National Film and Television School in Beaconsfield and Armin Animation in Bristol. And this was an animated short film project for Nick Park. It soon became... when It, it started because when he he was inspired by the by, by the founders of Armin, he wanted to do his own stop motion. When he showed it to them, they talked to his teacher and said it would take forever to do his project, so he told him to bring his stuff and everything. Plus, and what do you know? We have a grand day out. Which this short premiered on November 4th of 1989 at the Animation Festival at Arnolf Arnolfini Gallery in Bristol. It was the first broadcast in, in a day before Christmas on December 24th of 1990. And on Channel 4. A Grand Day Out is followed in a ser in the series by that will continue with 1993's The Wrong Trousers, 95's A Close Shave, the 2005 film Curse of the Were Rabbit, and the 2008 A Matter of Loaf and Death. The short was not nominated in Academy Awards for Best Animated Short. Uh. Excuse me, short film in 1991, but lost to another Ardman film, Creature Comfort, which I might go check it out because it comes my eye for a minute about Creature Comfort. I want to check that out. Made for tomorrow. Another stop motion animated film, short, my, film made by Nick Park and Artman Animation also released in 1989, which <laughs> is like you're playing double. Which one will win the pro, which one will win the Oscar? Which one will win the Oscar? Creature Comfort. Eh? Playing doubles. <laughs> so yeah. And as for history of the production this is quite a tale, you ask me. Nick Park started creating the film in 1982 as a graduation project for the National Film and Television School. In 85, Ardman Animation took him on before he finished the piece, allowing him to work on it part-time while still being, a fun, being funded by the school. To make the film, Park wrote to William Harbert's company requesting one long ton, which is... 1,000 kilogram of plasticine clay. The block had he received had 10 colors, one of which was called stone. This was used for Grummet. Park wanted to voice Grummet, but he released realized the voice he had in mind, that of Peter Hawkins, would have been difficult to animate. For Wallace, Peter Parker offered Peter Sauls a 50 quin, which is like 100 bucks, to voice the character, and the actor acceptance greatly surprised the young animator. Fun fact! There was an actual recorded audio for Grummet, but was never released. I think it was for was Peter Hawkins who did the voice for Grummet, but it was never released because, like you said, it was hard to, you know, animate the, the mouth for Grummet, and 
growing the best way to ex- talk by doing expressions like with his eyes. You know, you see his you can see how he's actually talking with his eyes. If you've seen the other shorts, like when he's like thinking or concerned or what the hell. Yeah. Or even in the Mountain Loaf of Death, blushing, which means embarrassed. <laughs> but yeah. It'll be quite interesting to hear what Grummet actually sounded like with with Peter Hawkins. They never released it to this day. And I wonder if this is intact, because you recall during the night of the premiere in the you know when Rare Rabbit came out, there was a fire at their warehouse which destroyed everything, including the sets of, you know, everything from Creature Comfort, including this one of a Grand Day out as well. I was wondering if that that recording was destroyed by the fire as well, which they never say. So if it's intact, hey, we might have in the future right here what Grum's voice actually sounds like. Which, hey, what does it want to sound like? We already have talking chickens. Sheeps, well, they don't talk and say, bah. Creature Comfort, well, that is an interesting one, which I'll talk about it tomorrow. I think there's two? Yeah, but, continuing. Parker, sorry, Park wanted Wallace to have a Lancastrian accent like his own, but Solace could only do Yorkshire voice, inspired by how Solace drew out the word cheese. Park chose to give Wallace large cheeks when Park called Solace six years later to explain he had completed his film. Solace swore in, in surprise. What the hell did he say? Shh. <laughs> I can imagine Wallace cursing like, damn. Park wanted. Oops, sorry. Grummet was named after Grummets because Park's brother, electrician, often mentioned them. And Nick Park liked the sound of the word Wallace and... Wallace was originally a postman named Jerry. Wow. Imagine if he Sam Wallace became a postman. That would change everything. He wouldn't have a, at least he wouldn't have a franchise. Ain't that weird? But Park felt that the name did not match well with Grummet. Park saw an overweight Labra- Labrador retriever named Wallace, who belonged to an old woman boarding a bus in Preston. Park commented it was a funny name, a very Norman <laughs> name to give a dog. According to the book, The World of Wallace and Grummet, which I want to check that, is that book available on Amazon? I want to buy that so I can read it. Original plans were that the film would be 40 minutes long, including a sequence where Walls and Grunt would discover a fast food restaurant on the moon. <sighs> this was plot. There's a score storyboard scene, you know, the sketches when they animated before they put stop motion. It was actually animated in, in sketches, but never fully because it would be too expensive and take way too long. Because you know how much of the budget was this? Brace yourselves, 11 pounds. That's like $30,000 today. That's now. Well, back then, it would be like close to 30 grand back then, which would be a total of 100 grand now. Which is damn. And this became a success. Whew. Hey, fight for your dreams. Like I was saying, the original story was that Walter and Grummet were going to the moon, and there were going to be a whole lot of characters there. One of them was a parking meter attendant, which was the only one that remained, the robotic cook, cooker right character. But there was going to be aliens and their sorts. There was going to be a McDonald's on the moon, and it was going to be like a spoof from Star Wars, which... <laughs> If you remember the cantina scene from Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, that scene, like with all the the only is instead of a cantina, it's a, it's a McDonald's. <laughs> oh boy, I imagine that'd be pretty weird. Wolf's going to get thrown in prison, and Grover was going to have him get a, get him out. 
by the time I came to Ironman, I just started doing the moon scene. And Sarah told me, it's going to take you another nine years if you do that scene. So I have a check with reality and cut the whole bit out somehow. I had to tie up the story on the moon and finish the film, which I will agree because, hey, how long this film took to... He met, he called Solace when the film was done and it was like <sighs> six years. So I put another nine years. So that's be a total of 15 years. And this is 1989, so it'll be finished. The Master Features in 1989, which will be finished until 1997 or 98, 98. Which is damn, boy. That's a long-ass short film. No, not a short film, be a movie. <laughs> which would be pretty funny, if you ask me. As for a home media release, the short film was released on VHS in the 1990s by BBC Video. <laughs> it was also released on DVD in Walls of Grommet and Three Amazing Adventures in 2005 by DreamWorks Hall Entertainment. In the US, it was released on DVD in 2009 by Lionsgate Home Entertainment and Hit Entertainment. Ugh. When I hear that name, that means destruction of fair childhood memories like VeggieTales, Tons to Tank Engine. I've been talking about the good old days, like. Okay, I already talked about this before, like, before the movie. You had, like, the Golden Era was, the final Golden Era was in the fifth season. Like, you have the dark stories, like, you know which one I'm talking about. Which, which one I'm talking about. But that'll be another time. In the UK, it was, again, released on DVD into the early 2000s. Lionsgate Home Entertainment later released it on Blu-ray for the first time. Under the release name, Walls of Gromit, The Complete Collection... On the 22nd of September of 2009, in time for the duo's 20th anniversary of the franchise. As for the release, the short film was premiered on the 4th of November of 1989 at the Arnold Fini Gallery in Bristol and premiered in the US on 18th of May 1990. It was also shown on Channel 4 on, on, on Christmas Eve of 24th of December 1990 in the UK. As for the response on Rotten Tomatoes, it has, oh my god, another one. 100% approval on Rotten Tomatoes with 20 reviews and with an average of 8.2 out of 10. The short won the first BF, BAF TA award for Best Animated Short, awarded in 1990, being beating out Park's other nominated short, Creature Comfort. However, a year later in the Oscars, the officer occurred in the short being nominated for a county award for Best Anime Short, but losing to Creature Comfort. So, <laughs> it didn't win that award, but it won the Oscar. And he told himself, the only way Nick Park can beat Nick Park is Nick Park. <laughs> it's pretty confusing, you ask me. As for the whole plot, to those who don't know, <laughs> if you're not... Okay, we're down, but this is from 1989. You can tell the... The animation style is a bit like different, you know. The tech, the style is a bit, you know, weird, like stretch, like kind of like like felt. It was actually platicine, you know, clay. So you can tell it's different, and you see how they change over the years. Like this is from, okay. This is 1989. This was a film project before they managed to hit big. You know, we get better clay, a little have more help, more sculpting, and over the years it got to look smoother and smoother, and still maintain that. The same spirit that we know and love. And this is the one that started it all, actually. Up the franchise. And with only 11,000 pounds, created one of the most iconic characters of all time in stop motion history. for the Not just for the world, but also in the UK as well. Which explained because originally, if you've seen these sketches, his early sketches, Wallace originally had a mustache, and Grumman looks more like a dog. If you see, he has sharp teeth and everything. But instead, he walks on his, sometimes his two feet or four, all four legs. <coughs> <coughs> to make the short, the cheese loving inventor, Wallace, and Grumman, Wallace and his dog Grumman, while trying to decide where they will spend on their 
bank holiday, find that their house is bereft of cheese, which of course, as everybody knows, the moon is made of cheese. I don't know when, but hey. So they decided to build a rocket to fly in the moon, and guess where he builds a rocket? Under his basement. Upon, of course, there were some gags like, you know, building the rocket or thing, like, paying it, building it, and soon when it's finished, they blast off. And you can see the mouse, like, with the glasses, like, looking at it, like, whoop, there goes some, the damn thing. And kind of, like, imagine the neighbors, like, what the, what the hell the rocket is, was that? And you see a massive thing firing out of Walsh's his home and see up to the moon. Oh, boy. Of course, Robot discovers Wallace's scheme magazine and yearns to travel to Earth. Which, oh boy. Okay, to make this quick, upon arrival, they began sampling and gathering cheese and encounter a coin-operated robot. <laughs> Wallace inserts a coin, but nothing happens as after he and Grandma leave, the robot comes to life and gathers the dirty plates left at their picnic table. Picnic spot. The robot discovers Walsh's ski magazine and yearns to travel to Earth to ski for itself. It repairs a broken piece of the moon that Walsh had cut off, issues a parking ticket for the rocket, and becomes annoyed by a oil leakage from the craft. The robot sneaks up on Wallace and prepares to strike him, but the money Wallace inserts runs out. It freezes, Wallace takes the robot. Batan, as a souvenir, inserts another coin and prepares to leave with Grummet and the cheese he gathered. Return to life, which, Wallace, it was a bad idea. You should not put another coin in that damn thing. I think it was about to kill ya. He took the bat away, but still, he's still a robot. <laughs> Fuck the bat, he has mechanical arms. The robot realizes Wallace and can't can bring it to Earth and follows him. Wallace panics, thinking the robot is angry over the cheese he is taking with him. He and Grandma retreat into the rocket, unable to climb up the ladder. The rock cuts into the fuselage using a can opener, which... <laughs> a can opener, damn. Upon entering the dark engine section of the rocket, it lights a match and accidentally ignites some of the fuel. Resulting in the explosion throws it off the rocket. While the ground lifts off, initially distraught of losing its chance to go to Earth, the robot fastens a discarded rocket fuel fuge, into skis and starts skiing around the lunar landscape. It waves goodbye to Walt and Grummet as they return to Earth, return home. During the, the credits, a ball previously kicked by Wallace drips into space. Yeah, if you don't remember that, when they finally walk on the moon. Wall just kicks the ball in. Boing. He looks up, waiting to grab it, and he forgot. No gravity. It's gone. <laughs> but yeah. To me, this is a act. I kind of like, you can tell how weird the, um, the stop motion looks, because remember, this is from 1989, and this was Nick Park's graduation project. Before it became a success in the animated world that we know today. And started a franchise that is over 20 years old. I think it's more like 20 or 30 years old now. We're in 2023. Plus, they're preparing to another Walls of Grand film for Netflix next year in 2024. Since they will release Chicken Run 2 this year in November. Which, there's a lot of change, but hey. Let's see what happens. But yeah, let me know what you think of A Grand Day Out. That you saw this on television, like the you know the reruns, because I'm not asking you to see this in in '89. So damn, you ain't no time lord. <laughs> but yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you've seen this and what was your thoughts. If you're a film student or say animation or stop motion, what are your thoughts about a grand day out? What was the impact on you? Did it inspire you or something? Me as a graphic designer, I do watch a lot of movies in stop motion. To me. It's like a mark in his, in not just in British television, but for the world, another iconic char a duo duo character to the world. Like you have many characters, renewable. 
from Hollywood and well yeah mostly from Hollywood but from the UK that's rare for another country that's not from the US but yeah let me know what you think on Walls of Grumman and a night a grand day out and if you're new to the channel remember to subscribe hit the bell like this video and remember our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers or at least 500k because on May of, of this year is our 11th anniversary which it's all started from 2013 to 2023, so let's make this happen. Until then, have a great day, everybody. See ya.